so my name is Eugene Suwandi. I am a pediatrician. I work uh, mainly as a pediatric hospitalist, pedi pediatric hospitalist in Charles Regional. Uh, but I also do some part-time in Dr. Abney's office in Cambridge Pediatrics. Uh, my background is I'm born in Indonesia, still on Earth. Uh, get my medical degree there. I went to New York 2001 to get my pediatric uh, degree in Beth Israel and has to move to Florida uh, to work with University of Florida to be in the rural outreach pa pediatrician clinic. Then move up here to DC metro area, La Plata that is. Today, we are going to talk about pediatric asthma. So the topic for tonight is pediatric asthma 101. So again, this is the lecture to know the basic of what is asthma. I'm not talking about the pathophysiology. I'm not talking about the Greek, Latin, Latin words, the why is asthma, what is the most up-to-date on how treating asthma. This is mostly one of the biggest part of asthma is education. So we cannot do it all. We need you guys to be our hands and our, our, our eyes, our ears, where you are in the community. So this is what the lecture is for about. If you need to ask something more, more you are more than welcome that, to ask. All right. What is asthma? Asthma is a condition of airway inflammation characterized by hyperresponsiveness and airflow obstruction that lead to symptoms such as cough and wheezing. Asthma comes from Greek word, azein, means hard breathing. So inflammation is not infection. Inflammation is a reaction of the body that there are something going on, I need to get rid of it. Infection caused inflammation, but inflammation is not infection. So that's two different things. What is hyperresponsiveness? <coughs> hyperresponsiveness is something like we expect something to respond if something happened, but it is exaggerated, such as what happened if somebody shake your hand? You put your hand out, you try to shake their hand. Hyperresponsiveness, instead of just shaking your hand, you grab the hand and slam them down to the floor. <laughs> That's what it is, in layman's term. Why asthma is important? One, in 2009, 9% children, zero to 17, has asthma. That's close to 6.7 million. Lifetime chances of having asthma is 13%. 12 to 14 million lost days of school around 3% of all emergency room are asthma related. Quote unquote, this is a very, what you call it, very low estimate. It's probably more than, because we didn't catch the urgent cares and God knows, God knows that there are more than that. Mortality in asthma, like dead of, died of asthma, is rare. It's like only one to two in 100,000, but it's still there. One picture says more than a thousand words, right? Okay, let's, let's do this. This is a normal airway. There's nothing into it. This is, that's the, there's the lumen or the hole. Then there are some mucus gland. There's the airway. And this is the muscle. Why do we need the muscle? Which part of the breathing you think that takes some effort more? Breathe in, right? That's reflex because you, Breathe out is just relaxing now. See this, that's a normal airway that is asthmatic airway. Not in attack, just an asthmatic airway. This is asthmatic airway during attack. What is this like a dinosaur tail? That's your alveoli, that's where the air comes in. Now, I would like you to do now two things. Instead of just take a deep breath, also get your force experts to say, <sighs> do that. Try do that 25 to 30 times a minute. You get tired, right? Then you turn blue. 
that's the problem with asthma. Asthma, they don't have a problem taking a breath. They have problem getting the breath out because the air is so trapped behind, they need to force it out. Remember, this muscle is there, so they can open it, but when they, this part has no muscle. The muscle is here. This has no muscle. So what they do to make it the air out, use your chest muscle, <sighs> that's a breathing in asthma. Not all wheeze is asthma. And not all asthma wheeze. What does it say? It means that there are lots of presentation of asthma and there are lots of things that present like asthma. That's the way I see it. It's very easy for parents, people, anybody say, my kid has wheeze. Wheeze is nothing than this. That's wheeze. Ain't wheezing. Ain't wheeze. Or not wheeze either. All right? Wheeze is strictly a musical, a faint musical melodious sound that you hear either through your stethoscope or in older case you can hear it, but mostly with your stethoscope. The second question, after you understand that, that you're dealing with asthma or something like asthma, is a question. Does my child has asthma? It's, it's, it's not easy. I wish it's easy, but it ain't. So the first question you ask all, always is, how old is your child? Age plays a very big part in this scheme of things. I'm going to tell you later on. Number two, what makes you think your kid has asthma? Most of the question I got as a pediatrician is, oh, because my grandma or my friend, my etc. says my kid has asthma. It's because my their friend has asthma, my kid should have asthma. That's the most common we hear. What makes you think your kid has asthma? Oh, he's coughing, okay. Oh, he's wheezing. What is wheeze? Uh, how do I know? There you go. <laughs> when does the symptom occur? Well, it occur when, when he's playing football, okay. When does it occur? It occurs when he has a fever. Okay, so it's very important when does the, what symptom and when does it occur? Then you also wanna ask, where does it happen? Does it happen everywhere? Does it happen at school? Does it happen in where? Is it everywhere or it could, any, any particularly in the symptom? Any family history of asthma is very important. Family asthma is very strongly genetically trans transmitted. Exposure to irritants, cigarettes, fumes, gas, gasoline, pain. Any exposure to allergens, pollen, dander, fur, cats, dogs, etc., goat, camel, tiger, you name it, <laughs> acid. Any history of allergic problems? Are you allergic to pollen, allergic to dander, allergic to anything? We call it allergic march. So when you have a kid that have skin condition, eczema, have peanut allergy, have food allergy, those kids have chances to develop asthma. We call it march. So you go from one there to the other end. Asthma in general is not easy to diagnose, especially children less than three years old. Why? The second is the answer. 50% children six years of age, at least one episode of wheezing. Now, let's go back. What, what condition in children makes them cough? Almost everything. Allergy, URI, bronchiolitis, cold, flu, you name it, they cough. 
Do you still remember the, the picture of the airway? Compared to the normal, they're smaller, right? Guess what? In children, they're small regardless. <laughs> right? And they don't have much muscle. Remember that? Muscle, they don't have much muscle. So whenever they're congested, what happened? They clog up. So under kids under three years old, they are allowed by pediatrician, by AAP, to have eight to 10 colds a year. Now, each cold lasts two weeks, approximately between the start of the snot and the end of the cough is two weeks. Two times eight, 16. <laughs> and you know, school is how many weeks? Too many, right? So, it, and they call, and they sick mostly fall through spring. There he goes. That kid cough all the time. Of course, it's allowed. There is no objective test to diagnose asthma in this in this age. I wish there are some thumbprint, retinal scan, nose swab, throat swab. Poop scans, milk, milk tests, PP tests to test, hey, you have asthma. Like, stamp it, hey, asthma. No, nada, nothing, nothing. In older kids, one, they can talk. They don't have much, as much cold. And they can tell you their symptom, and there are ways to diagnose of asthma in older kids. We'll go through that. Children who have four or more wheezing episode in one year and last more than one day are more likely to be diagnosed with asthma. Number two, the wheezing should be unprovoked and recurrent. That means the fever, the cough, the irritants should not be playing into that. So the kid just wheeze out of nowhere when there are triggers such, okay, it's just the weather changes, it's uh, pollen, it's, I cannot say smoke because smoke, cigarette smoke is not an allergen. <laughs> there are many parents that my kid's allergic to cigarette. No, they're not, it's an irritant. Irritant doesn't make allergies. Allergy is something that some people can develop, some not. Almost everybody get irritated by cigarette smoke, 98%. So it's not an allergy. They cannot be allergic to cigarette smoke. So does with the pain, the fume, their irritants. Family history of asthma. Again, you need to ask that, are there any family history of asthma? Oh, on his side, don't care. His side, her side, your baby mama's side, your baby papa's side. <laughs> Anybody has asthma, I need to know. And yet, if you're adopted, it doesn't count. Because I have a parent asked me all the family history, and then at the end of the interview, they said, does it matter if she's adopted? Yes, I just spent half an hour explaining everything that doesn't make any sense, yes. <laughs> Adoption doesn't mean they're part of your, doesn't mean you're shared genes. <laughs> history of dermatitis, food allergy, allergic related condition. Again, very prominent, very important, needs to know basis. What diseases sounds and look like asthma? Number one, number one, the top of the list is reflux. Why? When you have reflux, what do you reflux it for? Food and acid. How does the child sound like? They cough. And sometimes they choke. Sometimes they have difficulty breathing. That sounds like they have asthma, but they're not. With the increased incidence of childhood obesity, so does this one goes, because they eat more than they, they should and that makes the reflux more prominent, and that makes them cough more. So one of, one of the things that we need to rule out before we diagnose with asthma is to rule out reflux disease. Number two is bronchiolitis. What is bronchiolitis? Bronchiolitis is infection. Remember, it's not inflammation. This is infection. There are some fever. There are some symptoms. The child doesn't look well. They are sick because of their small airway is infected and inflamed. So what is inflamed, loss of secretion, the smooth muscle try, it's like, 
what happens if there is, imagine you're standing in front of your house, suddenly a truck passed by blowing all the dust. What you gonna do? You go in and you close the door, right? Same with the lung. Something comes in, they notice, they go in, they close the door. So they try to lock the lung to get all this discretion, but it's throughout the airway. So the lung gets small, the small gets smaller, loss of secretion, that's cramp, they wheeze. That's the problem. Upper respiratory infection, including croup. Why? Phlegm goes down, remember? What happens when they see phlegm? They close, they bark, they cough, sounds like wheezing. Lower respiratory tract infection, laryn like tracheitis, br uh, bronchiolitis, in including pneumonia, including the airway, they close, they a lot of secretion, they wheeze. Tracheomalacia, what is trache tracheomalacia? Tracheomalacia is basically an inherited condition where their airway is floppy. Your airway should be open at all times. This one is like a slinky, it closed. So when they sick, they close, they cough, they wheeze. But the way to check it, when you give the medicine to this kid, it got worse. We're gonna touch that. Cystic fibrosis, heart failure, I hope not. This is the triggers of asthma. It's very self-explanatory. So from exercise, pollen, bugs, chemical, cold air, what, is the, what are the symptoms of, of asthma? Cough at rest or prominent during or after exertion. Poor tolerance to exercise. Usually the kid knows, so the kid usually inactive. So you, kids who doesn't like sport, you need to ask why don't you like sport? Sometimes the answer is because when I sport, I cough. Or they don't perform as well as other kids because they get tired. So sometimes kids who, who's like on the side, you need to ask them too. Difficulty breathing, rapid breathing, feeling of tiredness. Well, you cannot get air, you feel tired. Poor feeding, this, very, this is, asthma is one of the cause of failure to thrive in children. In general, we spend only one to 2% of our energy to breathe. In asthmatic kid, if they get attacked, they spend close to 30, 40%. So kids couldn't gain weight because they spend of their energy to breathe. Chest pain, usually in, adult, in older kids, they said my chest hurt, chest tightness, noticeable breathing movement. So when you see a kid sitting down and kind of panting, sweating, well, it's like exercise, and wheezing. Are there any tests for asthma? Well, there is, but usually doctors able to close or closing in just by history, like the pattern, the symptom, family history. So you kind of know if your kid has an asthma or not. In older kid, you can ask little Johnny to sit down. This, this is gonna be the instruction to do the spirometry. Put it tight over your mouth, don't move, Take a deep breath while it's closed and blow as hard as you can. Do it at, to a three-year-old. You'll get old by just doing that. <laughs> Same with pig flows. Put a good seal with your mouth, take a deep breath, blow it as hard as you can, and try to do it two more times. Again, almost impossible for a three. I, I, I would say less than five. You know, sometimes you have a four-year-old, but you know what, it's hard. It's not easy to have this test done for a kid. You can look for chest x-ray, air trapping, there are some hyperinflation, the lung looks bigger, full of air, but it's not definite. So now my child has asthma. So what? Well, I know this is a rat skin's land, but Jerome Bettis, the one Super Bowl, he's, he, he's asthmatic. Kenny G, I don't know, um, he, he plays saxophone and he has asthmatic, and the guy on the right, you know, he has asthma and he can be president and get some extra for that. <laughs> so, you know, part of 
asthma is still uh, like a stigma. You, t- uh, you tell the parents they got depressed, they got down, oh, my child has <laughs> asthma. As pediatrician, as care providers, we need to tell them that it's not the end of the world. Asthma right now is with all the medicine and all the support. They can live as long as, as productive as m- most human. But again, it's education, education, education. Knowing asthma, so I'm taking two of the first from an from a very wise word from Confucius that you need to know your enemy. In in order for you to beat your enemy, you need to know your enemy. If you don't know your enemy, you cannot beat them. So you need to know what is asthma. So again. Education, education, education. They need to know asthma is not infection. Asthma is not what they caught in Walmart. It doesn't matter where asthma coming from, your side, his side, neither side. Now the kids, your kid has it. I know how we deal with that. Asthma is not a disease, it's a condition. It's, they can outgrow asthma, but it's a condition, meaning you live with asthma until proven otherwise. The enemy shall be your friend since you're going to live with asthma make it your make it them your friend so you need to know how do i treat asthma for it to not not to flare out just like marriages you need to know what your wife like you need to know what your husband like do not irritate the heck out of them because if not you get beaten out you get tired (laughs) if you get tired you cannot breathe then you need to go to emergency room no so, emergency room or urgent care only for emergencies. This is very important. I cannot stress you how important the, it is. Emergency room treat emergencies. They don't educate, they treat you, and they send you home. They don't record your visit. They don't follow your symptom. So, if you go from ER to ER, you don't know what you're dealing with. They think you have asthma, but you're probably not. So you need to speak with your pediatrician. Let them know this is what happened to my child. Make sure pedi- your pediatrician understand your concerns and your child's concern. For instance, little Johnny is a star football player, but he cannot run because he gets tired. That's a concern. My child unable to function every day because he, gets, he cough all the time. He cannot study because he cough all night long. My child is in a marching band. He, he is a star player, but he cannot do it because he cannot blow the horn. He got he, he a coughing fit. The number three, make sure your pediatrician follow your asthma, your child's asthma. Every attack, every recurrence, every wheezing episode has to be documented. I have so many encounters where, how many, child, how many times you wheeze before here? Oh, multiple times. Look at the chart, nothing. Well, what happened? Oh, I went to f- patient first, I went to CVS, I went to this, I went to that. Never recorded. The kid takes albuterol every single day, which we're gonna touch that in the next couple of slides. Your child doesn't live in your house 24 seven, so you need to share the information to whoever, so that's where you guys play this role. Speak th- with the parents. Does he have asthma? Is it? Is what is it? You're just saying he has asthma, or your pediatrician said he has asthma. Speak to your child's school system. Speak to your child. The number one, he he or she is the is the number one person you need to speak with. Do you have any concern? Especially if they're bigger kids, they you know they they might have some concern with their condition, and be your child's partner. That's important. You know, if they think. All of this asthma thing just gonna make your getting into them, they won't do it. Remember, asthma needs active participation of its victim. Type of asthma, there are cough variant asthma. This is usually in children, they don't wheeze, they just cough. So usually, this is the kid that has been coughing for weeks, months. You treat with every single thing, you throw brick to them. You try every single thing, you try, you try exposure, this doesn't work, and you t- and you try asthma medication, and it might work. This cough, this asthma usually outgrows on its own. So usually when they're older, they, they outgrew it. 
exercise induced asthma. This is usually asthma that induced by exercise because when you exercise, you create lots of heat, lots of, and you take more air, the airway constrict and they cough. And their asthma based on severity, mild, pers mild intermittent, mild persistent, moderate persistent, severe persistent. I'm not gonna go into deep on that one, but in general, that's just how severe is your asthma and how, how often is your symptom occur and how you treat them with. Treating asthma. When you have mild asthma, mild intermittent, you don't need controller, you just need to rescue. So just bear with me for five minutes. I'm gonna give you an example. Imagine you own a jewelry store. You live in Southeast DC, quite. So you starting with having some burglaries in your, in your store. First, you call police, you call 911. It happened all the time. Then you wonder, it's not good to call 911 because all they do, they come after the fact, right? They come after they steal something, then you call them. It doesn't prevent them from coming. So what are you going to do? You install security system or you have security guard. What's the purpose of security guard? To prevent them, you from calling 911, right? Now, you start initially using security guard only once a day, in the daytime. Then, the burglars start to get clever. They come at nighttime. So they still, so they still, they, they steal your stuff at night. Then you think, you know what? It's costly, but I'm gonna invest. So I'm gonna start putting the guard to all day long, day and night. You have one in the morning, one at night. It's good for a while. Then they got smarter. They still come and beat the crap out of that security guard. So you're putting more security guard. But if you have security guard and still the burglar still occur, what happened? You still call 911, right? That 911 policeman is your rescue. Your security guard is your controller. When the, blood, when the robbers come, the security guard ain't gonna be able to fight it. They are useful to deter them from coming. Once they come, you still need to call the policeman. If you have burglaries and all you do is call a security guard, you ain't gonna help because they still are just a security guard. But you need to call 911, the policeman, to come to help you if the burglars actually breach your securities. So rescue medication is S-A-B-A, -A, short acting beta agonist, albuterol, proventil, pro ear. Sometimes you give oral steroid like prednisone, orapred. Controller medication is usually inhaled steroid, floven, budesonide. Montelukas is a pill, it's called singular, and LAB, long acting. This is if somebody needs on rescue, every single day, day or night, summer, winter, fall, they need to take it. The purpose of this controller is for them, prevent them from using the rescue. If they take the long acting, they still rescue every day, something ain't right. So you need to tell them, you need to go back. So you call the parents. You said he's using this, but why is he still needs a rescue? So something's not right in that one. They come to me, oh, he has inhalers. Yeah, you think, like, which one is which? I don't know. So bring the inhaler to us. Or oh, it start with the F. Okay, doesn't help. Start with this, you know, I'm not guessing, bring the thing to anywhere. It's called rescue for a reason. And if you bring to the doctors, let us know which one is which. So we go to asthma attacks. Usually, they're symptom free. Then, there's, there's triggers, they develop cough. You treat with some short acting, beta agonist, they respond to treatment. If they don't, the cough gets worse, they wheeze. You treat with more frequency, it responded, but you still need to go to your primary care doctor, primary medical doctor, to tell them, hey, he just has an attack, please check him out if he's okay or not. Because 
if the attack doesn't go, they will give you with more medicine, more frequency. If they don't respond, you go to emergency room. If you don't, you call 911, meaning you don't put your child in a, seat, in a car seat or to the car going to hospital. You don't do that. If they still very much attack in distress, you call 911 and, you, and they come to your house. Managing asthma. Be your child's best advocates. Communicate about with your pediatrician about any changes in your child's asthma status. Remember, we don't live with you. We are only there when you need us. So you need to jot down, give us info, what changes. Is it any better, any worse? Because remember, asthma can get worse, but also it can get better. If it gets better, we can take off some medicine out. Be fluent with the medication names and dosage. Be vigilant about refilling medication when it's expired or it's running out of, you know, out of stock. Remember, it's rescue. If you don't have that, you're in a boat with, without a paddle. Remind your child to take the medication. It's, it's kind of a good luck kind of thing because medicine and child usually doesn't go to, together, especially if they have no symptom. But remember, you, you still remember the, the picture of the airway? When you have asthma, the airway never go back to normal. They always have that. It's just going to get worse and get better. The more attack you have, the far away them from being normal. So the less attack they have, the better airway they have. Communicate. Teachers, know who has asthma in your classroom or school nurse. Communicate with the parents if you see any changes in behavior you suspect might be related to his or her asthma. Sleepiness tiredness, not paying attention, lost, lost days of school. You might wanna, is, is he or she okay? As much as possible, remind if the school has medication for the asthma attack. So if he has asthma, making sure you have the medication for it. This is important. Every kid who has asthma should have that. That's your helpers. That's how we know, it is how we communicate to the parents. Asthma action plan. Cannot emphasize how important that is. Most of the time is there are miscommunication between the parents and the doctors. So at, nowadays we are very strict. If they have asthma, they have asthma action plan. So you ask them, okay ma'am, do you mind if I take a look at your asthma action plan? then you see what it is. If you have a question, always call doctors. I mean, in Florida, we, in our outreach, we, we get calls from school nurse all the time. They ask us, hey, uh, I got this, and he's been using this every day. Do you mind, you know, like, we might not be able to answer at that time, but we usually, we, we give you callbacks. And if school nurse call, we know it's quite important, so we'll get it. Should be an, you should demand any parents who has asthma, and even, it's not just pediatrician. If I discharge a patient with asthma from this hospital, they will go home with asthma action plan. We use now term is reactive airway disease, not obstructive. It's like a bridge, you know, those kids when we cannot diagnose them with asthma that fall into the, the criteria. So we use reactive airway disease, but by saying that we kind of bridge them into getting into asthma, the, the treatment is the same. The, the, sometimes we don't use asthma, just, I know it's bad, but you don't use the term because they're, we afraid they're gonna be deterred by the term. But right now, AAP is pushing, if it's asthma, say it's asthma, okay. then you treat them. A lot of people do not take it as seriously when you, they go, no, it's just rad. No, it's, it's not asthma, it's just rad. But, well, no, but, no. <laughs> could um, it be because it's the age? Because Most in elementary so schools, the younger, they, they're not as willing to tag, you know, tag it as well, muscle. Well, let's put it this way. The kid has five wheezing in that year. Three of them are provoked. So two was unprovoked, mm -hmm. right? So you need to put asthma some action plan. Or you need to put some treatment into that kid because they cannot keep on losing days of school and they cannot need, and they need to function. So... They don't fall into the asthma cr criteria, but the thing that is not right if they call this bronchitis, no. There is no bronchitis in children. You, they can, but it doesn't present like that. So when they treat bronchitis with albuterol, that's wrong. But if it's reactive airway disease, 
it's probably they're go they're saying it's asthma, but it's not yet asthma. We cannot say it is asthma yet. And by rule, we cannot diagnose with asthma if it's not asthma. So it's and two wheezing doesn't call an asthma. So it's part of the gray and unfortunately seventy, eighty percent are in the gray zone. So well, sometimes they got that after they got attacked. If you have attack, you, you have that period for a couple of days to a week, but it should be written in the mom's nose that, or in the asthma action plan, that it said that when they have a, for instance, Johnny admitted to the hospital for three days for asthma tuna. He went home with oral steroid, albuterol, every four hours. Yes, he'll go home every four hours, for a week until we see them again in the ho in the office, and we tell them what to do next. Two puff every four hours. It is true, but it should not be the maintenance. This is just from the parents. Now imagine during the AAP when we meet, we have questionnaire. This is pediatrician, right? Board certified pediatrician. In the conference, five out of twelve have different ways of doing things. And that's, so right now, they are very simplifying it. They're putting out guidelines that we need to follow. Insurance are very clear on how, to, if, for instance, you cannot get refill on albuterol within a week. No can do, ma'am, unless you have doctor's clearance. Not if you do it every four hours, but if you, if you keep on using for days and days and days, then you don't know what's normal. Yes. So, I mean, we don't like it because then, uh, it's not like they have immunity to it, but you're, you're losing your baseline. Right. You don't know what is your normal anymore because you keep on using that as a regular basis. So you don't know how you would you, and the body get used to it. For before PE, I can understand, but every four hours, I doubt it. I mean, I would say get the asthma action plan. That's the, the push, like you should not, I'll take the orders, but you need to give me asthma action plan. And if it's so, ask who's the pediatrician and call them. I think the pediatrician should know. I mean, I'll take some blame too. We sometimes write orders, not too much thinking into it. I mean, y y you would hope we do, but sometimes we don't. And sometimes when people, when we gave when we give feedback from you guys, probably then it makes awareness, hey, there are people who's looking at your orders as a way of helping somebody, so we better write it more clearly, or more clearly, yeah, makes sense. So, you know, this is just asthma, you know, and I think I cannot emphasize that, you know, unless we get the word on the street on these parents and more people understand this, we will not get this anywhere. We won't. And, and the more they don't get treated, the worse the symptom is. And I'm going to point to the elementary and the middle school. Taking medicine is, is a habit. So if you get this habit since they're young, they become good at it. You know what? There are no kids come only with one. There are no disease only come with one symptom, especially asthma. You will see increase in heart rate. You will see that they are tugging. You will see that, that that's what we often for, for two hours. How, how many hours are going to fake it? They're going to get tired of doing that. And then usually when they know they're going to get the IV, they're going to get poke and this and that, they'll get better if they fake it. So, you know, but a kids, most kids who has asthma, they need it. And the parents especially needs education. Uh, you know, uh, I'm here. So I'll try my best to be available if anybody asks for, you know, classes, anything. But, you know, it's all about education. In asthma, the treatment is easy. It's how you get it done is hard. The airway of asthma the kid is very reactive. Remember, hyper-responsiveness. So instead of normal response, they become hyper-responsive. So when you give the asthma... When, when you give the albuterol half an hour before they do something, it calms them down so they don't respond to the, in, to the air, to the pollen, to everything, not to overreact. That's their logic. But I agree. I went to the PE class of my children, and I went to the recess. Oh, hell. <laughs> recess is way more uh -huh. Yes. So then I'm like thinking, 
thinking every time I have to give it before P, I go, it really should be before recess. You know, instead of yeah, yeah. Well, that's for elementary, for middle school, they do a lot of hard work in, in PE. PE. So when they do the pacers and they're running back and forth, they need it before PE. PE. So it's just your frame of reference to where they need it. They're, they do real hard for yeah. stuff yeah. in gym. Yeah. In middle school, so they need it. And I, I mean, I yell at mine to come after when you know you're going to do pacers. And I tell my gym teachers, check if your kids have asthma and they have inhaler. Because I've had to call 911 for kids who can't catch your breath after those pacers. So. All right. I guess that's all for tonight. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. much. All right. Thank you for coming.